Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, our second session of uh, on the budget. Uh, and uh, we are up to infrastructure and development, and Amanda Pollock is here with us, and the floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll give a brief overview first and then get into a little bit of specifics. So infrastructure and development is six orgs. Our first one is org 19,000, which is our planning department. We have org 25,100, which is building permits and inspections. We have org 60850, which is our stormwater utility, the, the stormwater implementation portion, not sweet, sweet, street sweeping. And then there are three different engineering orgs, a general fund engineering, which is 31,000, water engineering, which is 81080, and sewer engineering, which is 84080. So all of our staff is out of uh, five of those six accounts. The stormwater account doesn't have any staff. For the most part, our operating accounts are pretty straightforward. It's, it's mostly uh, office related and staff related uh, expenses. There are some important changes to point out for this year, and the biggest change is this really finalizes the split of public works. So when you look at any of the um, kind of the backup spreadsheets, especially for those three engineering accounts, you'll see in medical, telephone, cell phones, where we took out what was once part of field ops and uh, Department of Water Works. So it, it, it's not insignificant. Uh, altogether, that was $65,000 that came out and then reallocated to those accounts. Uh, additionally, there was GIS money that also uh, moved towards GIS. So uh, things like the, the trailer at field operations that houses the uh, senior leadership team, that had been previously in those engineering accounts. So the alarm system, janitorial, the uh, just building maintenance has all now moved to field operations. So you'll hear that from them in the afternoon. We all coordinated to make sure we knew what we were taking out of these accounts. Uh, they, they took those funds in. So really that's the biggest changes in the operating accounts is, is that shift of funding. We have in infrastructure and development, there's one essential item for consideration and that is eliminating one of our engineering tech positions to add in what we're calling a transportation project specialist. And when we were public works, there was a project manager that handled the, the high level, all the transportation projects. So I've modeled this position after that. There was a, a, a staff in an engineering tech position that would be a, an appropriate person to handle this. So this is everything with our paving, curb gutter sidewalks, all coordination with the State Highway Administration, Salisbury University, uh, coordination with new bike paths, bike lanes, cycle tracks, um, anytime we need to change a speed limit, rename a street, change the direction, eliminate parking, add parking, everything would funnel through that position. So what we had it in public works with the reorg last year. Um, it became apparent after a few months, hmm, there's a void. You know, we don't have the same person to really help with the, especially the legislation and the, you know, working with people on the ground to say, oh, okay, yeah, you, you'd like a consideration of a speed limit here. Let's do a speed study and then I'll get back to you. So uh, that is our, our essential item is it's, it's a new position, but we would be eliminating one to add that. Uh, it, it is a change in grades, but it was, um, you know, it, it's not just a totally new position. Can I, can I stop you mm -hmm. for a second and just ask a question? Sure. So, with the reorganization, has the is the budgeted amount from the previous year adjusted to the new organizational structure? <clears throat> well, the good news is, is um, as you may recall, the orgs didn't change. Right. So everything flows. Okay. It's so compared it's, the comparison. Okay. Uh, in that way is, is so, but there's a few twists and turns. Um, <clears throat> for example, if um, she moved cell phone reimbursement, let's just, as, as an example, let's say previously it was being paid out of one org and she put it on the list of, I don't need to pay this anymore. And then they started paying that out of another. So that'd be like the GIS. Mm -hmm. right. That was exactly. an example. So, exactly. so, so while the org stayed constant, some of the practices of where some expenses okay. are paid were moved, and that's going to throw some comparisons out of whack. Mm -hmm. In terms of the personnel as well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. if you took the total and the total, 
last to this year. Right. What's the what's the delta? So actually, there most of the personnel were in the right places last year. Okay. We only had a couple of folks still to move. Uh, our administrative assistant was still out of her. She split as we all are out of the three engineering accounts, but her water and sewer accounts were different accounts. They were the resource management, so we okay. made that change. Okay. Uh, the only still kind of holdover is, is GIS, uh, where he was split out of, I believe, all three accounts, but um, I don't think that the general fund could absorb his entire salary, so portions of GIS, um, the assistant GIS, I'm not sure his name, director maybe, mm -hmm. is still coming out of the engineering accounts on water and sewer, which is fine. But the but, heads are still the same. Yes, okay. yeah, mm -hmm, the heads are still the same. So okay. for the most part, yeah, the staff is split. Um, to, to echo Keith's point, our medical accounts, for example, and those three engineering accounts were all of Public Works medical needs. So it was all drug testing, all DOT testing, everything. So it's been nice to have this year to track for each of us, infrastructure and development, water works, and field ops, what do we need for our medical accounts? So we have that sorted, and now you'll see, I think for field ops, they've added those into each of their branches. So oh, okay. streets will have one, and parks will have one, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. So for, for us, we're keeping them in our three engineering, but you'll you'll see that especially with field ops and water works. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up while I was here is, is Schedule B, the uh, capital improvements projects. If there were any questions to, to that, it reflects what you've seen recently you when you yeah, it's up there. Yep, when you approve the capital improvements plan. But since we do administer those, I thought this was a good time to, to bring up Schedule B as well in case there were any questions of, of things um, on here. I'll try to answer anything that you have. Uh, Main Street Master Plan is funded if you want to scroll down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. The Main Street Master Plan is the next phase, so those are uh, Phase 1, which is the plaza, and then Phase 3, which is North Division Street. And um, we had received a million dollar grant from the state, which showed up this year in FY18, so that million dollar grant is for those phases. And then we had also received a hundred thousand dollar grant from Community Legacy for street lights, which had been previously accepted as well. Um, we're, we're funding the continuation of the bicycle master plan and then the urban greenway implementation includes the pedestrian bridge at the end of camden street towards the new riverside circle so that is uh, the design and construction of that pedestrian bridge is in the urban greenway implementation line uh, the main street master plan yes none of the is there any impact from the, for instance, when we stop for the folk festival, that period? Mm -hmm. Does that impact any of the dollars that would push them further out? Um, or no? No, not necessarily. Uh, what We're still try planning to bid those next two phases together. And so we're bidding them together and we'll award those in FY19. Okay, so they'll be awarded. Now. They will be awarded next year. So there may be that by the fall of 2019, there is a, a shutdown where they clean up and, and then finish. Um, they probably won't be finished depending on, you know, where we won't start this year until after the first folk festival. It'll lag a little bit, but um, not enough that we felt like we needed to award another okay. contract in the next phase. Any other questions on Okay. Okay. Uh, that, that really summarizes our accounts. Keith, do you have any comments about the, the, the split of this, of the money? Uh, as far as the funding, the funding? Yeah, funding. <coughs> uh, the, uh, most of this lines up pretty straightforward uh, as far as where, where it belongs. Um, so I think we, uh, we've been over it quite a bit and have, it, have them in the right slots. I think you answered my questions. Pretty good. <laughs> Let me just get to them. She sure. Does. Mm -hmm. So that's what she does. <laughs> um, on the personnel side, the inf they were talking about step increases in the personnel, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Are there step increases? You mean uh, from a career ladder standpoint? Yeah. Not at this time, no. So you'll, 
Right now, we didn't have anybody eligible for that in the upcoming year. And you will be seeing me presenting a project engineer career ladder, which is one that we don't have right now. Uh, there is a, essentially an entry level project engineer, and then we have a senior project engineer position, which currently is, is not filled and is, is not even vacant. So what I would like to do, and I've been starting to work on it, is to have a project engineer one, two, three, so that as they get um, professional licenses or hit some major milestones, then we do have a career ladder there. So, um, but otherwise, we we don't have any any okay. eligible. This that year. answers my my sort of my sort of answers my second question is, in the fire service, there are specialties, engineer positions that is, you mentioned uh, certifications. Yes. Are, are, so are those specialized to the person's field? Yes. So especially for project engineers, uh, as you as you see after my name, it's, it's PE, professional engineer. Right. That's our, our biggest certification and, and what any engineer is striving for. But before that, there's one called EIT, engineer in training or fundamentals of engineering licensure. So gotcha. uh, our basic uh, entry level project engineer does not require that. So maybe the project engineer two level would require the fundamentals of engineering to be passed, and then a project engineer three would would require a, a PE that gives someone something to strive for. And then when you're preparing for and taking these very difficult exams, that really gives you something to say, okay, if I can pass this, you know, I can go to this level. But in addition to that, we wanted to put some milestones on managing certain size projects and uh, you know, being in control of budget schedule, you know, some, some other things, quantitative things, working on a variety. You know, our projects range from water, sewer, stormwater, roads, you know, traffic, sidewalks. So making sure that to, to go between the levels, you've experienced the wide variety of projects, that you're not just doing one thing. So that, that's also something we're, we're trying to build in. Okay. Now, the, the PE. Mm -hmm. Is that just similar to when I was in school, when we had blackboards? Um, I'd say that before you commented on it. But um, where you could take, you had to take the uh, initial exam when you were in school or right after it, and then you have to wait five, is it five years? Yeah, it's four years. So that initial exam, Fundamentals of Engineering, you can take when you're in school. And, right. and actually, even back when I was in school, right. I had a professor junior year that really encouraged us to take, to take it. it. He said, you're juniors, there's yeah. no pressure, don't study, you're mm -hmm. in the middle of taking all these classes, go take it. So my friends and I did that, and, and most of us passed junior year. You couldn't become an engineer in training officially until you graduated from college. Right. So once you graduate, then you have to work under a professional engineer for four years before you could sit for the PE exam. And, and that's a very long, difficult exam all day all right. long yeah. and, and you know, tested on everything that, that you would need to know for your major. But, but yeah, it's a, it's a four-year waiting period if you graduated from an accredited university. Non-accredited university is a longer waiting period. You got answered my question. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Amanda. Sure, no problem. And thanks again for finding that money. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rudisell, I'm sorry. Do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Can you hear okay, Hardy? Should I call Mike? Yeah, actually, I can hear very well. Great. Good. Who's coming from the Okay, we're we're back now, and we're going to be doing finance. And before I forget, Mr. Rudisill is participating. For those at home, Mr. Rudisill is participating by phone. He's traveling. Hopefully, he'll keep his mind on the road. And uh, we'll proceed now with finance. Okay. Right, okay. The first thing to uh, to uh, convey about finance this year, we had uh, expense-wise, the biggest expense. Uh, change was we had ten thousand dollars invested in munis training to accomplish a few projects this year uh, to implement some capabilities that we didn't have in the past so that was an essential item that um, uh, they got approved uh, otherwise we had some organizational changes um, for, uh, <coughs> uh, finalizing the career ladder that had started uh, the last couple of years this uh, should should as we know it to uh, finish the career ladder for us it's it really is tweaking it in a very good it puts it in a very good place and i'm going to highlight uh, some of those differences as we go through it um, the first thing the utility billing supervisor uh, went from uh, grade six to grade seven that puts them on par with people that have been here for a similar period of time and have uh, similar technical 
skills. So they'll be on the same level as the revenue supervisor and the accounts payable too. So uh, that was a great accomplishment there. Otherwise, uh, the two reports that are the utility billing clerk, as they uh, stay with the city over the years, they become more valuable. They, they, and actually, uh, a one is uh, how you come in, a two is after that you have uh, a couple of years of uh, training, you become more valuable, so you get an upgrade there. A three is when you're starting to have all of the skills as a supervisor, if the supervisor was not here, you have the redundancy of a person that could perform their functions. So um, having a one, two, and three uh, accomplishes a lot here in the utility billing area. Uh, revenue clerk collections, similar thing. We had a one and a two. Now, if you continue to uh, stay with the city, you pick up some of the skills of the supervisor so that if they're absent, you have the redundancy, uh, we pay you for that. You, you, you can graduate to a three if you meet those qualifications. Uh, the same happened for the parking uh, uh, clerks that are taking care of the, uh, the uh, parking financial transactions. So those, those are the highlighted changes. Uh, we also uh, were able to uh, bring the assistant directors up a grade. We've been talking about that for three or four years now. And we were finally able to do that. So it keeps our leadership bench uh, uh, in a good place. Otherwise, it's not shown on this uh, org chart, but uh, towards the end of the budget process, uh, the administration decided to move uh, the grant manager and the grant coordinator uh, from uh, community development with, with an ACDD to finance and they'll report directly to the assistant director of finance operations. So that's the, that, that, that change also occurred. That's not reflected in this chart as you see it. Where right would which, which one? Uh, right here on, this, on the left right. side. Uh, unfortunately, it's the same one that has the most reports. Uh, but we will do some rebalancing here, maybe, uh, as that, since that happened at the last minute. We, we, we have plans to perhaps move parking or accounts payable uh, over here to balance that out. Yeah, because it's, it's a little lopsided. A little lopsided. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of GL accounts over here that you don't see. In other words, so over here you got it's GL accounts. Volume. Yeah, volume. And you've got people over here. So one's operation, one's account. Gotcha. But the, the skills are still, the overall load is pretty balanced, but bringing in that grant activity is just enough that we want to rebalance, yes, and we'll take care of that. Okay. We had uh, quickly, uh, our uh, Sandy volunteered without even us asking, you know, said we need to, we need to balance that, so good. it's good. It's good. All right, Any questions? All right, so that's pretty much a, a summary. I, Let's see if I have. <laughs> no, I didn't have anything on that. Do you have anything? Okay, thank you. He's good. Ms. Glantz, good, good to see you. Good to be here. Thank you. All right, who's up now? Or is anybody here? Okay, while we were waiting for uh, the next group to come in, we're going to look a little, we're going to take some time and look at the uh, CIP and the debt, relative to debt, and uh, Keith is going to uh, drive the train now. Okay, to walk, walk us through the, the first category is public safety, and the first item was replacing the uh, fire station one's roof for 102000 we had we had the chiller uh, at the police department for three hundred thousand. Now, as far as uh, bonded debt, Did, Mr. Rudisill. Yep. The ones we're talking about now are all under bonded. Yeah, all, okay. all bonded debt. New, this is all new bonded debt. debt. Yeah. And then we go down to the ones that uh, Amanda just walked right. us through. All these. Yeah. And uh, we had the, the uh, bridge maintenance that she didn't discuss, and then the streetscaping for 206. And that was a total of uh, 8885000 Okay. And that's what's uh, scheduled in the general capital projects. Uh, jumping over to, while we're here talking about that, we can, we can look at uh, 
uh, this is a, the older one. Uh, we were eight, so <clears throat> initially we had on the first pass, we were able to take all of these projects for 795,000 and we repurpose money for other projects that were cool. that had left over. Right. And then uh, we were able to do another pass and we were able to find uh, another 755 so that we did all of the projects that were scheduled in CIP with no additional debt at all this year in order so I think that might be the second year. I'm pretty sure we did that last year too. We were able to get yeah, a new debt. I think it was close. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's it's great. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah that it's really, really good. Really nice. Not the same story about the parking uh, fund. We we did have uh, a condition study that fa found that bearing pads need to be replaced and it was a significant cost of four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So that's a biggie. How much I just refresh for everybody. Could you refresh what's what's coming off the debt? Is there anything that's coming? There's not too much that's coming off the debt this year. Not this year. Yeah. So what's the so projection? Do you know roughly what the projection is uh, uh, for coming for, off for? Uh, oh, on the future payment. On the future payment. Yeah, I can uh, I can pull that schedule up for you in a few minutes. Okay. And email it to you if you like. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but there's not not much on general capital uh, in in the general fund. Uh, there's very little coming off until like 2024. 20, Meaning that it, it's it's pretty steady as far as everything that's on there. So we'll be adding, and very little will be coming off. Okay. Okay, you sent me that. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, okay. that's the run through as far as the uh, debt. That's Pretty being straightforward. Added. Yes. It's good news. The the fact that we are not incurring any debt on the top is. Yeah, and a quick glance just to see where we are in order sewer while we're here and kind of uh, talking about that. I'm going to bring up the schedule we use every year to uh, keep track of where we are with the uh, use of surplus and everything. So this is the order sewer worksheet. And you can see at the uh, at the mayor level, we had budgeted to use uh, a, a, a one point seven nine three million. And since then, because we uh, were able to reallocate those uh, bond funds, we were able to get about eighty thousand dollars of reduction, eighty one thousand dollars of reduction in cost. That's significant dollars. And that's every you know that's every year you know that's for a long period. We've already, so we've already, we're already making those payments are already built in. So that brought us down to about, um, about um, 1, 712000 uh, as far as our use of surplus. Which, as we all know, uh, based on our variance history, uh, should result in no use of surplus. Right. So we've got three years, roughly, before we start to see any significant decrease in the Debt. And again, we we're talking that we always have to talk separately. When we when I said when that, I was talking general fund. Now general fund. now we're into water sewer, Correct. and it has its own it has its own future future payment schedule. And I'll I'll provide both. Yeah, I've got to switch it in my head because like I yeah, I just like, switch gears. Yeah, we switch gears. Which, so. Yeah. Um, Eighty-seven thousand is no small chunk of change. That's good stuff. Just tell Amanda to keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we'll go offline until the next group shows up. Open the windows. Or fan. All right, we're back. We're going to, uh, next on the uh, list is water and sewer. And Keith's going to take us through that. Thank you. Julia. And Allison. <laughs> Sorry, Keith. <laughs> Let's start with Keith. Okay. Oh, Keith. Okay, first up would be um, what you've already learned that we did have an 8% increase. Um, that 8% increase, effective October 1st, um, the is, is uh, quantified at $913,000 uh, of revenue. That's what's uh, plugged in uh, plugged in as an adjustment at the mayor level. Um, so we've already discussed that. Uh, can we can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can talk about that. The mayor uh, and I had a discussion, and um, 
Matter of fact, we talked about what would be the impact if we took half, if we took it down to four. Obviously, we don't become healthy in the pool as until later. But um, eight percent, in my opinion, is too high. Um, Trash fee pickup fees also come out this year. Yes. Too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Did um, has the mayor made any decisions or? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, and I wasn't. I uh, apologize. Wasn't a council on Monday night uh, to hear that discussion. Yeah, he actually stated on Monday that we were looking at possibility, um, and then we had further discussions, and I think. I don't think that the impact of doing it four, four, or four and whatever next year, I, I don't think, I know it doesn't, we don't get to the point in the, in the surplus that we want to get to, but um, I think from a practical point of view, uh, considering the fact that we have fee increase and still not hold yeah. on the, uh, Trash collection. So that would be uh, on average an eight dollar increase if we went to four percent. I believe it's six, it was sixteen yes. a quarter. It was sixteen at eight, and I oh, believe it would be four. Today I thought he said ten uh, at the press conference. I, I think that was an average. What was the average number? I would think. And Keith, do you know how many years it would take to be? Here he is. Solvent I think it's three. There. Oh, he he knows. Yeah. Oh, he went got some needs. Lunch. Good afternoon, Mayor. Hey, Mayor. How are you? Good. Good. We're talking about sewer. Rate. We're in the weeds. Oh, okay. We're in the weeds. In the weeds. <laughs> Actually, we're below the weeds. <laughs> that is the spot to be. Um. Especially on a day when they announced that seagrasses have come back. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. <laughs> Thank you. I'll slide in a little bit. We just we just asked to, to put in plug in four just yeah. to see what the impact is, both on on right. the dollar, the increase, and what it would be. It, uh, relative to the uh, debt and, and getting out of that. And, and do we have any estimates as to what that would do to next year, that following year? Because, you know, that's what, we, yeah, that's what, we think, what did the consultant recommend? Like eight, five, eight. two? And by the third year, we were going to be flat or like a rate of inflation? Close to, break, close to flat. Okay. Isn't that what he said? And it would be self funding from that point on, I think. Well, then I'd say, you know, I'd say. One, I think, I mean, there's so many factors. One is stretch that out instead of making it this hit, right? Yeah, now, right? right. I so think we all agree with that. Yeah. Yes. So let's do that. Um, two, um, see what from the CIP can be shifted to the right, which, I mean, we did a, as much of that as we could in the short time we had from when the report came in to, you know, put it, having to put the budget in its final form. Three, the bond proceeds that, um, a man that does that. have identified. We saw that. Yeah. And then four, I know we're not there yet, but uh, healthcare conversation. Um, you know, we've we've been working really closely with our um, folks. You know, they estimated a 14% increase in the cost of healthcare this year. Um, we were able to work really hard to get that down to six. Keith and uh, and his team were able to, and Jeannie were able to get that down to six. Um, and then. Uh, We've got some thoughts on how we can tighten that up even more, uh, which has a real effect not only on general fund but also on water reserve. Right. On the CIP, if I remember, the the uh, changing of the meters was a huge number, and and we there was a question about whether we could physically do that right. in one year. What so if that? if we could could we make the maybe make the the um, judgment. To push that in, into two phases or three—I I don't know what the 
I, I wish Mike I could answer what's the capacity, what's our capacity to install? Not. Not. So <laughs> then Not the question is. He's got them split now, I think a million and a half and a million and a half we might, as long as you get a good, an equal contract and your buying power is good. One. That's what I'm saying. Three, Buy, yeah. three or five hundred thousand a year or something like that. Or even that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what we should slow, do. It, slow it down a little. Yeah, let's let's do let's do that and plug see it what happens. Happen. Well, <clears throat> it's uh, well, that's not that's that was out there. It was in like year four and five at the CIP. Oh, I thought it was in year. I thought it was sooner than that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can pull it up. The uh, yeah, as far as uh, CIP is concerned. It, uh, Don't feel bad, yeah, Jack. Half the time I feel like I figure out how to save money, it's like 10 years from now. <laughs> oh man, but when will you get there? <laughs> you <do> something else. <laughs> Our kids will be in middle school. I figured it out that every time, I, every time I've been asking, like when does our debt really start hitting, it's always four years from now. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out how that happened, but... Well... It's actually like, uh, was it almost 2019? Like five years from now. It's 2024. 2020, yeah. It's 2024, I think, when we actually, yeah. that's when stuff starts coming off. Right. That's why we were, we had that discussion. I asked myself, when does this, when does this start to come off? 2024. Yeah. Is that the way it was? Yes. So that's how I remember. And I, I don't remember seeing it different than that. Okay. <laughs> I guess maybe it's what I wanted to see. <laughs> yeah, it's out of here. But still, it's it's you know, it's, it's good to be thinking about what's ahead. So you've only got. Oh, that's the uh, the well. Isn't it? Here's the totals there. You can see it's, these are the big years. Yeah. But the good news is we we were able to accomplish everything that we wanted for 19 and with no debt. Right. And that's huge. Okay. So those are the values. Uh, a two percent would have a two hundred twenty thousand uh, dollar reduction in revenue, and three percent three forty two, four percent four fifty six. All right. So can you go to um, capital projects, um, water sewer? Yep. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, so. so Revolving funds 265, Pega 361, right? Right. Reallocate 795, bond so bond so bond 755. Then that's gone now because we made the adjustment. That's, that's the, the thing that man so, so yeah. we're good. So so then I would say can we can we dig into Pego and revolving 451 and pay for those things? Um, so, so we're good on bond. So, you know, I think we need to look at should some of those get shifted before, you know, before looking at operating accounts and things that are going to be a little tougher to figure out. Would it help to uh, plug in like a two percenter uh, into the worksheet and see where we are? To kind of oh, see what our use of see what our use is and see how see, yeah. see how comfortable we or, are. Well, I don't know. Is my thoughts? Well, well, hold on. So, because we already had an eighty thousand dollar reduction in debt service, that would pay for eighty of the two, the two hundred and some. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I, and, I don't know. Council, you know, what, what you all think, but I plug in four and start working from there. I, I, I would do four. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can, because what all you're doing is you're pushing, you're pushing out, and that's not.
Do you want to look at four? So yeah. I plug four yeah. in and see, four. see what that looks like? Plug four in. Right. Right. Let's, let's do it. Okay, so what, what we've got now is a use of uh, 2169000 Yeah, the 80s in there. It's a use of two one two yeah two one six nine. Is it possible, Keith, to look at what an additional use of three sixty nine does to the uh, revolving funds? Not here in, in just a few minutes. Why don't um, we do this? Yeah. Why don't we work on that and we can get the other guys to do their thing. We don't have to resolve it, but if we get the information out this afternoon, then we can look at it again. Because that number I think was nice. So I mean, I, I think the, the one added, thing to consider is it's we a, added 456. It's a trade-off. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's trade-off. Yeah, it's an increased use of surplus. That's, and, that's what you're going to do. Goal is to, you're just pushing to get all you're doing is pushing it. But, but, I, think the, but I think it's an acknowledgement of we're going to push it. Right. Do it slower, and maybe to use a surplus. I think what we need to do is see that it's blown out. Right. The way that we talked about the other night. Get the whole picture and see how far it shifts to the right, to, the, to further to the right. Yeah, it's that, probably going to be a couple of years. Yeah, we don't have in our possession the the model. Uh, the model, yeah. So I'm sure we can get the bot. Can oh, we? Yeah. Or get him the. Uh, we can send him a fire him off an email. Yeah, why don't we do that and have him, and have him do that. that? That way it's the same model exactly. You got it. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll move on. We're going to go uh, now to field ops, and then we'll come back and revisit that when we have the, all the data. Field ops, you're up. Come up to the table. <coughs> okay. It's not like the back of my head. <laughs> Good afternoon. How's everybody? Doing well. Good. All right. The floor is yours. You haven't done this before, so a little bit of an overview in general, and then um, if we have any specifics, we've got. Um, I was curious if that's quite no. This is not all for you, but we've we've looked at the thing uh, ahead of time, and if there's any questions, we'll ask you once you finish your and, and talk. Please talk about critical items. All right. 
Well, the, one of the main things that we did on the administrative level was to try to reorganize some of the accounts. There was a lot of money in one specific branch rather than having it distributed amongst the branches for each of them to, to use. So that was one of the things that we tackled this year. Yeah, Amanda explained the <laughs> process. So it was kind of a uh, It's a big process. Big project. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any significant changes relative to that that we should, we should be aware of in, the, in looking at the numbers? We did add some accounts that didn't exist. Um, for example, the office account wasn't even created in a lot of the branches, so we added those. Um, shoes, safety shoes, um, I think a safety account. There were several that were kind of a mandatory account for the function of a branch um, mm -hmm. that we try to add for all of them to be able to track their spending more as well. And you're confident that the ones that you ended up with are all yours? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I guess we're confident that we've captured all the individuals that there, there's nobody missing in the rework. Okay. All right. Uh, in general, though, uh, the account changes did not result in an increase, if at all minimal. It just creates more accountability on each department as right. opposed to getting it out of one front. Uh, we had an increase in personnel and field ops of uh, one part maintenance worker that you can see in your uh, spreadsheet. If we're good on that, we actually want to make sure, if I'm correct, Julie, on the account. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like it was put under 4,000. It should actually be four or five. Zero, zero, zero. What page are we on for that? Um, you talking about the, the new the new park work? Yeah, yeah park it's under F and O. So uh, we, we, we've got that transfer up here, then moving it from forty thousand to forty five thousand. That is correct. correct. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we'll take care of that. That will just be a finance adjustment here. I can log that in. We've got that. The dollars are there, but it's in the wrong place. Yeah, yes. we're just going to move it from yeah. one to the other. Okay. Thank you. Um, if I can just add uh, just something to, you know, there are going to be a lot of these notes to keep a track of over years, but the one thing I'd suggest that we acknowledge this year is that um, the request was for <coughs> greater increase in staffing for parks maintenance um, and looking you know, critically at the schedules as this team has done um, I think it's absolutely justifiable it may not be affordable in one year but I think it's something we got to continue to think about taking bites out of um, as we as we move forward in the next couple of years I think that's a team that's going to need growth in order to, to achieve the level of maintenance that we all think is appropriate. Increased events, you know, with the marathon, National Folk Festival, and other other events coming up. And a lot of special projects, you know, um, you know, frankly, these guys have been working really hard at, um, uh, and, and it's not just parks, it's, you know, it's, it's everybody, it's the whole team, but, um, but, you know, everything from um, the Christmas tree to, you know, um, uh, Transformational Thursday is just trying to polish the city, you know, just trying to, to keep uh, uh, marina uh, installation and improvements. And it's a long list, and, and frankly, the list of things we want done is even longer. Um, and uh, so, I, I think it's important that there's, there's a huge payoff in terms of how the city looks. As a result. And you they know, are taking on more projects that in the past we would have contracted out, but we're looking at ways to save money and we've got the skills, um, but at the time, you know, I think other things are backing up just because we don't have enough staff, but. 
and the reference, the park, the park's master plan is the guiding for the activity level for the city Correct. park. For the city park. Yeah. And and there's a conversation that needs to be had about that too, um, because there's a kind of a long list of, of additional maintenance things that need to be worked into the rhythm, and and even slight improvements that aren't maybe weren't on the radar of this Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee when they were creating that, but but some other things that you know we've um, thought about recently, just just maintenance things that yeah. you know, can be can help with some of the erosion that we've seen, and, um, and they've been out there. You guys have been out there working on it. Yeah, um, you know, I just think uh, from a from a personnel standpoint, this is going to be probably a growth area in the future. Okay. Looking at the numbers, it's, it's pretty much flat. Otherwise. Otherwise. Yeah. Other than the position. Right. Um, okay. Any other any other question? That was my. Those are my questions. None. Mr. Rudisil, any questions? I don't have any questions. Okay. I forgot to tell you he was on the road. I was wondering if <laughs> he was. That's what it was. Yeah, he's on I the road. I didn't know that either. He's on the road. <laughs> he's on the road. Hey, Ari. Hey. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Keep up the good work, please. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know, they did all the prep work at the amphitheater site. Uh, yes, I know. I was, a, yeah, a ton they, of money, so yeah. they're doing a terrific job. Yeah. Thank you guys for getting here. So appreciate it. Yeah, I've been out there installing the bike racks. Mm -hmm. They look good. <laughs> oh, look. But, yeah. We're trying to get the sign. I was just out there. It sounds like it's coming on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Next up is uh, HCD. <laughs> For the record, Everett doesn't want the comfy chair. <laughs> I, I decided to take it. I don't want to get too comfortable. I offered to light a fire under the seat, just to you know, give him a hot seat. But, uh, Welcome, Everett. Thank you. Good to have you. You too, Theo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was about to be really I did, you know, I, I was just going to let you hang for a <laughs> See how long it took me. All right. Just so everybody knows at home, it's like 142 degrees yes. in here right now. I need a church fan. Church. <laughs> All right. Floor is yours, guys. Okay, you want to start? Or you want to start? Um, I can start. Essentially, essentially, most of the department structure and everything is going to stay the same. There is a uh, conversion of a code enforcement officer into a service position. Um, and essentially that is going to help with our contracted um, uh, cleaning, the cleaning liens for doing contracted services for weeds, rubbish, and things of that nature, hopefully to try to uh, reduce some costs there. Um, those are probably some major expenditures that the city outlays initially anyway, and then we try to recoup through billing. But it's, um, I think this position can help probably reduce those costs and and uh, there's also the addition of a neighborhood uh, relations, manager. relations manager that will help oversee the community centers and some of the community projects that are done with our AmeriCorps uh, personnel. So those are two new positions really in there. In, in terms of the cleanup, what percent, do we do all the cleanup or do we do a percentage or do we just farm it out? We, we've been farming that out. Um, the majority of that is farmed out and then done by contractors that we um, get billed. The city actually pays them and then we uh, bill the uh, services out and try to keep that money on the, on the back end. If you turn to page 76 of the analysis, not the detail, um, 
Oh, the count, sorry, the count number is 25200, uh, and then the specific accounts are 523620. Almost there. Sure, take no rush. Um, so if you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see weed cutting, rubbish removal, and then the next page has board up houses and vehicle towing. Mm -hmm. um, those, as you can see, are all uh, are kind of our some of our biggest costs. Um, and that's where specifically Everett was talking about uh, the reductions that we'll be making um, to those accounts and, ex and in exchange bill for the services that that new person will be doing. So in, in the process that should save some tax money as far as what the city has to put out and hopefully collect back as well as we'll be able to hopefully reduce the cost of what we're billing for those services. So the homeowner and the property owner uh, benefit substantially. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what an average bill is, but I mean, they can charge hundreds of dollars to yeah. mow your lawn. Uh, the, the the contractor can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And this uh, by by doing this, it would be a fixed mm -hmm. Salisbury fee. Yeah. Previously, we had numerous contractors um, that charged different prices. So I mean, some depending on which contractor got assigned to which property. You could actually get a higher bill um, for the same, basically the same work. Um, hopefully, what we can do with this service position is uh, create a more consistent, besides billing, a more consistent service for it. Does that increase our exposure? Insurance? Uh, no, not, not for Te technically. Promoted. Technically, the people that we hire are agents of the city. If I'm not mistaken, so um, at least when we were looking into this, Susan had mentioned that it's the same okay. in terms of our liability. But I'm not positive that was just you know. I mean, that would make sense. Right. I mean, we you know we send people onto private property to do other work. Um, but the um, yeah, the cost of the property owner, I think, is one of the advantages. The other is the group that just left. Um, you know, they've requested multiple. Um, uh, parks maintenance workers. Um, this would not be a parks maintenance worker, obviously, but part of what the parks maintenance workers do is any property that the city has ended up owning through receivership or, you know, uh, in the neighborhoods, which are quite a few, uh, the substations, you know, anything that we own, and the list is 30, 30, 40, 30 properties 40, long, yeah. long. We have to mow the grass, and they do it. Um, so uh, the idea would also be that this person would take on that. Yeah, and I mean this person, as far as, as, far as the like, liability, most of the uh, work that would involve actually touching somebody's house is probably still going to be contracted out. Mm -hmm. And we're probably we're going to aim most of our uh, attention probably towards the rubbish and grass, which is probably a lower uh, risk because you're not actually touching somebody's hand. Right. Okay. And the, the other increase associated with that is on page 77. If you go down to um, object uh, 534302, there's a request for $9,000 worth of equipment um, for the variety of needs that we'll have. Um, you know, again, all of that, um, is almost entirely offset by the reductions in house board ups and weeds and all that. Um, so yeah, reduction of 8,000, 15,000, Yeah, uh, we're reducing our other costs by about $50,000. So uh, between that and the, uh, you know, what we'll be charging, uh, it will be lower, as, as the mayor said, it will be lower what we're charging the homeowners and property owners. But between the reduction of $50,000 and, and what we'll be charging, we will recoup those costs in, within the first year. This, this shows a reduction, is, unless I'm reading this wrong. AmeriCorps is going. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't know. Do you, wanna, do you wanna switch to that? No, I'm just saying that that's the one of the questions that I had mm -hmm. on my list. 
Um, yeah, so the, the AmeriCorps amount, uh, I've got to find it. Uh, I think that's, that that's like down eight, it's almost half. Yeah, so uh, the, we do need to make a, uh, um, here we go, uh, we do need to make a um, council level adjustment because um, you'll see under AmeriCorps it's 8,600. Um, I supplied them with the wrong numbers and that's my fault. Um, the, we are eliminating a half-time position and the half-time position is 6,500 whereas the full-time position is 8,600 um, and that, that was my mistake. Um, so we are combining the Youth Civics Council in with the Youth Development Specialist. So what did we budget for? We, we budgeted 6,500, 6, but it's, it's supposed to be 86. So just the numbers got reversed. We budgeted 65, so it should be 8,600. Yeah, so the difference is $2,100. In the... And what account was that in? Uh, that 30, is 25200 uh, five, Jack, did you have five, it? Yeah, uh, three, five, five, six, yeah. nine, two, three, five. But that ha that shows. Did you have one and a half? Yes, yeah. we had one and a half. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So we hear, I'm sorry. we are we are eliminating the, gotcha. the halftime position. And gotcha. Overall, we will have citywide an addition of of half an AmeriCorps person because the mayor is obviously getting a full time as well. Gotcha. Correct. Mayor's okay. Office. Field ops. Field ops. Okay. Sorry. The, uh, okay. Sustainability. Sustainability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, can we can we please um, put a pin in this topic though and come back to it? Um, so we are uh, we have the um, two people who have been working on the AmeriCorps work, uh, working on our youth work. Right. Um, and and we'll be down one. Um, and you know some of those things can be consolidated. Some of the some of the past work that we've done for a long time, but with all the new work that we you know planned on and, and are planning on, we we made a cut. You know, knowing that one of the current occupants, uh, Amber, is actually term limited with AmeriCorps, she can't continue with us. Um, but I'm not sure it was the most prudent cut, and then we did that at, at my level. Um, you know, the department asked for the yeah, position, and and we didn't fund it. I'm not sure it's the most prudent cut. Um, so I'm just wondering if we can't come back to that maybe yeah, later today, or put it on the list. Can we put it on as a follow-up when, when we do our sort of summit at the end. Where and I don't want to put any words in Theo or Everett's mouth. So. Do you have anything you want to yeah, add? Yeah, I, I do want to say that, that Amber really has been doing a fantastic job. Um, we expected a lot of her, and uh, she was very unfamiliar with, with our office environment and some of my antics. Um, and, uh, and she really has it, stepped up. In a yeah, good way, right? Uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Um, no, just I, I can be very scatterbrained. Um, and, and she really, between the... Um, on the table initiative, the, uh, you know, just taking a couple, a couple of the things, the on the table initiative, the bus stop uh, stuff, I mean, she really has been engaging the community in a way that we haven't before. Um, and I actually, All American Cities uh, put out a email blast recently um, telling all cities across the nation um, about how great the on the table model was. Um, and we, Amber had already found it and was, uh, was already doing it. And last night was the third one. Yeah, um, I it was, yeah she, it was she said cool. it was good. Um, and it looks like we have a little leftover money to have a fourth one as well. Um, so, I mean, she's just been uh, thinking about things in a different way that I've really enjoyed. Um, and she makes fun of me, so I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, you know, it has, been, has been a valuable asset. She seems very dedicated to the cause, which is motivating her to um, her efforts. Mm -hmm. And everything I've seen from her since I've been down in the office has been very, you know, top-notch work with, you know, very little play um, for what she's doing. The thing, the thing was impressive last night is there were a bunch of us older people there, <laughs> and uh, the the students that were there. And they were students from all different levels, and um, they were very quiet when we, you know, we were looking at us. And then Amber was able to 
draw it out of them mm -hmm. and challenge them, uh, which is something I don't think we could. The rest of us could have done. No, because um, they live it. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was discussions on bullying and so, so, cyberbullying, on uh, fighting in schools, etc. And it was pretty interesting discussions. Mm -hmm. And they were very honest, I thought. So uh, that those you can't put it. It's hard to put a value mm -hmm. on, on that kind of uh, service that, that she's able to do. So. And, and on top of that, I forgot to mention, she is working on changing her schedule um, to allow herself to be working on Saturdays um, to hopefully allow for some programming at Truett Street on Saturdays. Um, something she's been working on with Andy. He isn't here, but he would be able to talk more about it um, as well um, because she understands that there is a need for other community groups uh, that want to utilize that space. Um, but because of our staffing and everything else, you know, it's not something that we can, you know, for instance, have a field ops person come in on a Saturday to, to unlock the place or to, you know, keep an eye on everything. Um, so, and there, and Andy has been great with working with her in terms of getting all those agreements together and everything. So, um, the two of them have a very good relationship. When's her term in? August 31st. Of this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, just, in, just into the next. Yeah. So, do, do we have any plans? Uh, as far as her as an individual, that that's kind of what I'm getting at. I'm sorry if that was indirect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Just slightly, but not, we got the best. <laughs> I wasn't trying. Yeah, and and frankly, yeah, yeah, nothing's a given. So yeah. I'm I'm not trying to make it about the individual. However, you know what what the uh, what her supervisor and what her department head are saying is you know, to us, and they've said it is you know we put that in the budget for a reason. You know, there's there's a, a performance level that is um, that to us screams we need to keep her, um, and there's a conversation that needs to be had. And I think um, I don't want to say you know I, I can certainly tell you I, I didn't disagree with that one. I'm ignoring that, um, but you know decisions had to be made, right. tough decisions had to be made. We saw oh, terms ending, yeah, you know. I guess we'll just swallow that bitter pill and say oh well, and um, yeah. Now, you know, uh, thanks to uh, that being that reminder being given to us, you know, we're saying, man, maybe we ought to take a look at it again and, and have a conversation about it with council. So we did, we, we did not discuss this before, <laughs> just so we know, but I, when I saw that, you were thinking, I was thinking the same. same yeah. That was, you know, part of my concern. I know she's a valuable asset yeah. to our city, mm -hmm. and yeah. she done a lot of great work. For the city and right. stuff she does on her own as well. Sure. So, so we can't, you know, we can't continue her as an AmeriCorps position, yeah. but we could certainly have a conversation about how do we continue that work, you know, and even with that how incumbent. Do we, how do we continue her. that work? Is yeah, I I think um, th three things that I'd consider, um, and this is this is just you know, if I get any of this wrong, you guys correct me. But th three things that I'd consider: one, that that neighborhood relations, neighborhood services work um, can uh, can and ought to be building a, a cadre of connections across the city in terms of city services connecting to the neighborhood leaderships, you know, wherever that is, and where it doesn't exist, starting to build those relationships. So that. Would, that would handle that person would handle the neighborhood walks all of that um, certainly they'd need help need some support but neighborhood walks managing that type of work um, you know even the on the table potentially you know there's community conversations but but then the, the youth work you know in the uh, community centers plus uh, supporting youth development advisory committee and youth mm -hmm. civics council I think some of that can be handled by a full-time AmeriCorps but it's I think it's more than that yeah. I really do. So I don't know if that's another half-time position, but funded fully by the city. I don't know if that's a full-time position fully funded by the city. I think we'd really need to, you know, um, maybe workshop this for half an hour, an hour, you know, all sitting in here and kind of writing out everything we're thinking about. Or maybe even give Everett and, and Theo and Amber some time to go and, and write down kind of all the hours that they think might need and say, here's our proposal. That would help us. Well, you know, like we've done this before. We put things on the re to return yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. And at the last minute, we can make some we can make some changes, but it might come down to choices. Yeah. With 
you know. It, but I understand the purpose of having community centers, and and there has to be some staffing and stuff because I, I think it's going to be something that once we get going, there's going to be a need for that, yeah. and you know we're not just building it to sit there. Yeah. Right. And, and even to your point, start to add up like you know community centers, there's staff coordination. Even if we're trying to stay arm's length from programming yeah. a little bit, um, you know, just staff support. Uh, now maintenance sure is a field operations thing, but but staff support from a you know people are gonna have questions and right. you know uh, what can I do? Can I do contract management? Because we've signed contracts with mm -hmm. each of the entities in. Sure. So, I mean, contract management. Right now, that's up at the executive office level. Andy's doing it. But, but all of that work. The youth um, uh, sports, Doverdale and um, cyclocross and softball, um, the uh, youth summer employment program. I mean, all of that could kind of be shepherded through the uh, youth team. Well, that Amber is doing youth summer employment. Yeah, uh, They're taking a record number of applications for that this year, too. How many? Uh, so we, we we had a little over 60. Um, so 100% increase from last year. Well, it, it's, 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 it turns out my numbers are a little off. It's, it is close to actually what we had last year um, because Jeannie had the wrong numbers. But, or I misunderstood what she was saying, maybe. Um, but still, we are, you know, it, it is something we're reaching a lot of people that we wouldn't normally be reaching. Um, a lot of people through Facebook and that sort of thing. Um, and, and for the numbers of that position, um, you know, one, one option is to have a contracted position. Um, I mean, I know that's not something that, that we always, you know, are a fan of. Um, but if we did put the Sioux Council and the current youth development specialist positions together, um, you know, last year we spent about 14000 um, So with FICA, if you're looking at, you know, kind of a $30,000 mark, um, which is roughly what other organizations seem to pay for that. Um, you're looking at an increase of about eighteen thousand um, to get well, to I that. Think that's 32. the kind of thing you're going to have to bring to the right. Have our yeah. discussion. Yeah. And exactly. It's a shame to see her provide this. Her doing such a great job, yeah. and then her term ends in August, and it's just like you know. She, I'm going to say she would probably look at it as if I'm not going to say it was in vain. But, I mean, somebody putting their heart into something like that, especially a youth, for youth, that's very much needed here in Salisbury. So I would hate to have to see her go because she is very adamant about what she does. She's ongoing. She's persevering. And the youth love her. Yeah, they do. They love her. So, you know, I mean, if there's any way that we could find a position available for her, even as a youth advisor. Celebrate youth advisor, less you know. Well, we've got it on the on the return too. Yeah, let's and let's okay. do your homework and let's do get us uh, get us some data and. Um, when is your next? So yeah, um, I have a question, if I may. What sort of data can we expect to see to qu to, to quantify the work that, that this individual has been doing? Um, we can try to gather together kind of a number of interactions. Um, we can get some Facebook data number of events that are being held, um, attendees, attendees of different things. Yeah, um, you know, there's, there's no, um, you know, it's, it's not an easy position yes, to quantify, um, but there's a number of different uh, data sets that, that we can bring to you. Okay, I, I look forward to seeing it. Um, I've reached my destination, so I'm, I'm going to have to uh, leave the meeting at this time. But thank you, everybody, for humoring me, and I'm sorry I can't be there physically. No problem, Hardy. Thanks very much. All right. Glad have a good night. Thank you. Well, we have the final adjustments are scheduled for May 22nd. So is that? Um, that's usually when we go on the list. Uh, it was May 8th. No, that's that's the third. That's the other. That's the other session if needed. The yeah, that's the if needed. That's the if needed. It'd be it'd be it just for whatever it's worth. It works better. If you were prepared, if, if we had all of our data and we and we right. could we could say we don't have anything else to do, we and we cut it. It gives us more time to host it and process it. And so you that. prefer doing the if needed? 
I, I would say we prefer it because okay. it happens, but it's not necessary. I'm just saying if it if it works for everyone. You're right. saying you prefer if that discussion, if those sorts of discussions happened on the eighth instead of the second. It would be it would be better, I think. And then when especially if it kicked in, I, I you need more time. That. In other words, suppose you get in there and something else that's surfaces right. and you that's, want yeah, and, and you want is, to talk again. Sure. Sure. That, yeah. You could even because then you'd have to go back again, and, right. we, and we're running out of time. You had to cancel the second but keep the eighth. Right. See, and see if you do if finish, you're finished. If you're not, you can keep going. Yeah, and hopefully if we do it on the 8th and everything's taken care of, you can finish the 22nd and just go to the 29th. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so two things then, uh, Theo, if you can kind of try to quantify. I mean, I've, I've already got the salary numbers. So I meant quantify. Oh, yeah. Some of, the, yeah. Some of, his, uh, some of uh, Amber's impacts, some of her impacts. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if, if you all can quantify not only the salary, um, piece that are not only the expense side, um, but um, sort of quantify kind of the hour justification of you know the wide act or the AmeriCorps position that's proposed, um, and then potentially her position as well. How much spillover into a second position there would be, and I, I, don't, know, I don't mean to subordinate one to the other because I think a contractor or a full time person. Probably be the more senior, right? You know, but well, we could. You see what I'm I guess what I'm saying is we could also eliminate both the court positions to save money. Is is another option. I mean, oh, okay. it would be an increased workload certainly, but yeah. you know, I just make it a one. Mm -hmm. So both, so use the civics council because if we're going to be having a neighborhood relations person who can take on some of the walks and uh, probably probably even assist on the table, then that frees up some more time for that that staff, staff person to do. The civics council. Okay. Um, so, and that's that's where the increase of those contracts would only be about eighteen thousand. So, versus last year, not not proposed. Um, so, our, our, uh, is it okay if we switch to homelessness? If, or are there other questions related no, to? I don't have any. Twenty-five two hundred. Okay, the homelessness amount um, is, oh, I guess, do you guys want to talk about soldier and neighborhood housing or anything like that? Any of those that fall under our, I, or, or whatever it is. The, what is SNHS funded? They are getting $30,000, okay. which is what we did last year, oh, okay. or this year. 40 was last year. Well, we have, oh, are we, is there still another 10000 that we have given them yet? So it's oh. April, so May, June, July, there is likely one more payment. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and, and one possibility is also, um, th this is probably more of a citywide discussion, but uh, you know, having some type of stats associated with that, because um, I don't think we're currently getting those. Stats associated with? Oh, the, the grants that we give out to Shipman, Neighborhood Housing, Food okay. Bank. Community garden, large or health. Um, well, yeah. so the community garden line is is organized this way, but community garden line is paying our water bill. Oh, oh, okay. Um, and <laughs> and coat. Uh, well, yeah, coat. I've got coat yeah, and, and and I'm fine if, you know, as I've said before, if coat was organized differently too. If coat was organized in um, mm. uh, PD. That's, well, that's where it was originally, but uh, PD requested to send it out. Of course they did. Yeah. Oh, of course they did. So, um, so SNHS, well, Maryland Food Bank, Chipman, um, you know, as you know, we have dramatically cut our community promotions, what used to be community promotions, and we've got some pieces lined up here and some in uh, business development. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, we we have said that we want. This is sorry. This is a broader conversation, but we have said in the past that we want, um, you know, access to their budgets, accounting if we ask for it, you know, audit reports if we ask for it. I don't know that we've ever pursued that, um, but you know, the whole philosophy and I'll, 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 my philosophy of wanting to get out of the grant making business is that. Yeah, our our budgets are tight. Our taxpayers, you know, budgets are tight. Uh, you know, when somebody can provide a service better than the city can, 
and we can pay for it, great. Yeah, and that's what I see is, you know, the code partnership is doing with the health department, the sheriff's office, and state's attorney's office. Um, that's, you know, and that's exactly what arts and entertainment does, but we have a contract, we, have, we do get access to their audits, Everything. we do get access to their budget, you know, we are their primary funder, so I think, you know, with all the others, uh, I, I think it's a reasonable thing to ask. I'd also just, I think we should acknowledge that for a small grant, you know, um, like for uh, Lower Shore Heritage right. Council or Chipman, we might not expect much information in, re in return. For a larger grant like SNHS, we know what impact we want to have. Um, and, and I think they can tell a good story about what they're doing, uh, especially from the um, uh, housing counseling uh, standpoint, you know, financial counseling, things that we, getting people into home ownership, things that we can't do, we don't have the capacity to do, but that we strongly encourage and want, um, I think that might be a reasonable request, at least to get a report um, to the city council. I mean, if they could provide a report, hey, here's how we're using your money, um, that would be, that would be really valuable. And maybe that could be done even on a regular basis, like to um, the, uh, uh, Housing Community Development Department, and they could share that report to all of us. And, and all it has to be is like a one sheeter. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. One thing this morning, fair. Just a clear the presentation of the council. Think it's more fair. Or presentation of the council. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 then it then it becomes public uh, right away. Okay. That's a good Just idea. It helps them too. Helps them talk about what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to clarify. Uh, you said it was the same as last year at 30, but last year it was at 40. Yeah, I was reading. I figured you were in the other yeah, column. I, I just read the wrong I just wanted to clarify that for the record to make sure nobody was confused by it. Yeah, no, I just read actual as opposed to budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, if you turn to page. Uh, let's start with 314. Good. 314. Yeah, we're going to uh, operational transfers. Oh, you're going into the detail sheet? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is yet yeah, uh, detail, I believe, not Hold on a second. for analysis. And yeah, you got to switch over. Hold on. Oh, sorry. No, I, yeah, that is the one that I have. Yeah, detail, sorry. Yeah, okay. 300, 300 what? Yeah, I forgot. I printed out uh, detail instead of analysis. Which book? The detailed, uh, the one on the right of the, the one that was sent to us. I have it up on the screen there in a second. That's, that's, that's better. That's easier. Is that it? Uh, it went there. <laughs> so there's a, yeah, that's right. Um, there's just a couple things that, you know, we've done in previous years. Um, $600 for transfer for Youth Civics Council, uh, um, Scholarships, either it's depending on the coordinator, but either two three hundred dollar scholarships or three two hundred dollar scholarships, um, and uh, well, community development projects twenty two hundred dollars. Um, actually, I'm not sure about that one. Is that annexation fees that are going in, Keith? Do you know offhand? Twenty two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah twenty two thousand. Sorry, not twenty two hundred. Um, and it's uh, some type of grant match. I'd have to go pull the uh, source documents to Okay, I'm not, not sure about that one. And then uh, $51,000, that's uh, the match for COPS grant um, in addition to uh, about three other grants that are in Schedule C. Um, we, we did not have to put in as much in police grant match because uh, the police department currently has, has one person funded through that grant um, as opposed to two, so there's been a bit of a reduction in, uh, in the expenditures this year and thus necessitating a lower match amount this year. So saving money, hooray. Um, and then turning to page 315, just the next page. Um, <clears throat> our request for Housing First is $97,300. Um, and then, uh, Keith, I don't know, are you able to get up our Housing First request Excel spreadsheet that shows the projected growth? Uh, I think any of them have it. Yeah. Um, it would be uh, now one over. 
Yep, that one. Um, if you scroll down a little bit. Um, so the way that we have uh, created this program um, is we, expansions are funded uh, with new grant matches. However, those grant funds really only last one year um, because of the nature of, of the funding and, and the regulations. Um, so if you see below there, we, you know, as, I, as you know, council originally appropriated $75,000. Um, we got nearly $13,000 in grant funding. Um, because that was our first year, you know, it kind of got us a little, it was a little slow getting up and running. Um, so the next year we only need 76, um, and then uh, 25,000 um, for, is how much we got in grant funding for FY18. Um, so you'll see there, there's a bit of a lag in terms of when that grant funding catches up to us for liabilities. Um, so we are putting in uh, another request for funding of $10,000. Um, for new funding, however, we expect that to kind of get cut in half for at least a quarter. Um, so we decided on, you know, having still having growth, but having a bit of a slower growth model because we still are catching up with the previous amounts that we've requested. Um, so that's how you get to, you know, that eighty-nine thousand dollars that we're requesting. Um, however, the total request is nine ninety-seven thousand um, dollars, ninety-seven three. And that's because we have a contract right now with the health department that if someone has Medicare, which uh, does not cover case management, that we in turn pay the case manager for them. We are uh, currently applying for additional grant funding to add a second case manager position, which would then uh, take over that case management funding. Um, so we have put in a request of $30,000 for ESG um, and potentially there's some CDBG money and also some resource navigation money um, that we are trying to put all that together to create that second position and um, thus turn over some of that case management to us um, in order to reduce the, those costs. Um, so I know that was a lot, so I don't know if you... Uh, I just tend to ramble. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> A couple, a couple of questions. Um, as the as this process continues, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure it's applicable, but in the beginning, I guess there's some low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as you get as you go further, as more the more success you have, is is it a safe assumption that the more difficult, the, the harder it becomes? In terms of the time, uh, uh, the well, you're talking about in terms of the difficulty of the people that were housed or the yes. cost savings associated. Yes. Um, I, I would say it's a mix um, because there are certain individuals that we thought were going to be really nice and easy to work with. They were completely compliant the entire time we were working with them, and they were not that way once they were housed. Um, there are other individuals um, that, you know, one individual in particular, who is very psychotic. Um, she thinks I am the son of the devil. And, uh, and she's, she's been great. She's been a, one of the best clients in our program. Um, so to be fair, there are people who are not psychotic that think that about them. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is true. That is true. Um, it's, not, it's not the first time that I've heard that. Um, uh, so what you see is may not be what you get. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, as far as cost savings, uh, we, we certainly have not gotten to all of the uh, most high-costing homeless people. Um, some of those, we some of those individuals, we have kind of I wouldn't say saved for later, um, but maybe they've been resistant to initially getting housed either because they didn't believe us or because they were kind of content where they were. Um, and then they start seeing their friends getting housed, or in you know, in some ways, their neighbors if they're in a tent out in the county, um, and that kind of increases their, their interest. Um, we 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 are very proud that uh, the we have had we have not necessarily had a reduction in homelessness overall, but that's larger economic trends. But within the population that we're serving, uh, those high needs, unsheltered individuals. Uh, we have seen a reduction in that in terms of what we, what we usually judge as the cold weather shelter. Um, so the cold weather shelter has between 30 and 40 beds, depending on the church. 
Um, and typically the individuals that are in there are those that are unsheltered. Um, they're not those that would normally be going to a shelter or, or otherwise. Um, last year, most churches had to turn people away at some point. This year, there actually were a couple times they had open beds. Um, so that, that was, that's kind of really what we were trying to achieve. That's, that's the population that we've been targeting. Um, and we have had a lot of success in that. Um, I mean, as we did at Dunkin' Donuts, you know, panhandling is still a problem, but, you know, almost everyone at Dunkin' Donuts the panhandling is actually not homeless. Um, you know, both Christine and I have interacted with them, and mm -hmm. they, are, they are certainly not homeless. One of them notes that on their sign, they do not mention that they're homeless. They just say that they're in need. Um, so, so, yeah. And, and if I can, um, you know, that sort of work, uh, the work on panhandling, and even our city strategy with signage, you know, encouraging people to donate, you know, to various organizations instead of giving cash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're talking about how to how to better um, you know, and more more broadly strategize. The other thing that um, I'll note for April and Muir in particular uh, is the group of five individuals that were sitting on the other side of the river mm -hmm. uh, on the steps by the river walk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I spent time talking to all of them. And all of them know Theo and Christine well. Um, they're all clients who have worked with them who are not yet housed. And um, you know, so I think you have tougher conversations um, when you know you you explain to somebody who's homeless. Uh, you know, here's here's the situation, and we do have options available. And if you're in any other small city in America, you wouldn't have those options. Um, and and it's not for everybody because it's not unlimited. Um, right now there are 30, and mm -hmm. th there's not going to be 60 automatically next year, right. um, and that's that's tough a little bit. But at the same time, we have people who are on city staff, you know, who are there all the time, who have a relationship with the homeless population and are interacting with them and are trying to get them services. And what was interesting is one one guy wanted to walk with me after and we talked, and Julia and I walked. Can I walked time him. out real quick? He said he was really cool, by the way. Mm -hmm. The said, guy said you were really cool. Okay, well, I was like, that mayor's really cool. Well, some some people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, that. Um, but we had a we had a nice conversation, and um, you know, one of the first things he said once he got alone and we were walking was, you know, so I live in Princess Anne, and you know, before that he had presented, hey, I'm homeless in, in Salisbury and I need I need housing, and what we know is we are solving a lower shore problem. And solving all of it, solving it completely, is A, maybe impossible, and B, something we probably eventually need to talk to all our partner uh, cities yeah. and towns and counties nearby in being standing there with us. Definitely. It doesn't mean, you know, Princess Anne or, you know, Snow Hill or Berlin has to figure it out, but maybe can be part of a, a cooperative or collaborative effort. Um, that, that's the sort of thing that I think. You know, el elicited for me from that conversation. The other thing is transportation was his major issue. Mm -hmm. He was asking uh, Julia for bus tickets um, or short transit tickets. And, and there are programs that, you know, short transit has some discounted tickets that they make available and that we've even talked about selling through uh, finance downstairs or maybe um, business development across the street, visitor center. So, I mean, there are there are a lot of things that we can do on multiple fronts to continue to help the homeless. Uh, but yeah, I think the challenge is getting into this work, yeah. illuminate themselves as you push further toward the edges. Yeah. And, and we, do, we do have some bus tickets, which we were able to give him. However, we, we do restrict that to individuals that have like a legitimate need or concern or can show some type of documentation. Um, but, uh, but it's not that that service is for a very specific clientele. You know, there's a larger problem of, of transportation unaffordability. Um, so, you know, we can't solve that either um, by any means. Um, and uh, just from yesterday from the Maryland City County Managers Association meeting, what a mouthful. Um, I was preparing the PowerPoint and it looks, and my rough estimates are that our program over the past year and a half, two years, has saved uh, about over $50,000 um, between 
a variety of different services, hospital, Medicaid, uh, our own police costs, everything else. Um, so as I've said repeatedly, you know, we, we are saving the county a lot of money um, in terms of reducing their detention costs. Um, that, that probably second to, uh, to the possibility of a psychiatric inpatient is the most expensive thing. Um, so we, we definitely are receiving, uh, seeing savings. Uh, one of my goals is to get an econ intern to actually, or I guess an econ and social work intern to interview our clients to get like a really thorough analysis of, of how much they were costing beforehand and how much they're costing now. That's a, that's a great metric to start tracking once you figure out if all the components are right. legit. Right. And uh, the, the last thing that I'll mention with regards to homelessness is our outreach resource navigation program, um, which is what's uh, funded with CDBG and um, local management board, which is state money that flows through the counties. Um, since uh, April 1, uh, Christine and I, but that is overwhelmingly Christine, has seen 202 individuals um, that are either homeless or housing insecure. Um, before this, I, uh, I tried to go through those that are literally homeless, so those that are in a shelter or on the street, and it's uh, close to 120. Um, so, so you're looking at, in three months, Christine has seen like 10% of the entire Lower Shores homeless population, um, which is a sizable amount. Um, I, I, it takes a lot of time to actually go through that and compile all the outcomes. Um, one of the reasons that we are looking at a second, uh, second position is to kind of increase some of those outcomes because we have had a lot of luck referring those high needs people to other permanent supportive housing programs. So people that have disability and are literally homeless, I think we've made 20 referrals probably that would not have been made if we did not have this service. Um, but those that kind of fall in between are always the hardest ones. Uh, the single moms with, with multiple kids um, that really require more intensive long-term um, work, which is what you know Christine's position was not exactly designed to do. It was designed to be you know, kind of brief to, to get people um, you know, there's been many times because of a relationship with the police where the police will call, someone will be um, unsheltered. I remember when Christine first started, um, there was a mother and a son uh, that got kicked out of where they were staying. Um, they had nowhere to go. The police called all the shelters. None of the shelters would allow them. So they ended up letting them sleep in the lobby. Um, uh, I think it was Officer Sigmundson, she's great. Um, and, uh, and the next day, um, you know, Christine was able to get them into a shelter, and now they're in Village of Hope. She has a job. You know they're doing very well. Um, so that's really you know what this what this is trying to target, where you know kind of this brief intervention to get them out of this immediate concern. Um, but uh, but you know there's there's more complex cases require more more time. Um, so it's it's definitely been a you know I expected this to be a service that was in need. I didn't expect it to be quite this level of need. Um, but uh, but Christine's also been doing a kick-ass job. So has Nancy. I'm really lucky. I just want to say that. <laughs> Great. So any any other questions for Theo? Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, and we'll. Yeah. This is crunch time. You're getting down to the, yep. to the nitty gritty here. So. Uh, but keep up the good work. Thank Tell you. Christine the same thing, yep. please. Yeah. Uh, but it's really. Uh, a worthwhile endeavor. Thank you. The the only thing that uh, you know we you just alluded to the fact that Princess Anne, you know, when you get a reputation for helping people, mm -hmm. you got to find out there's more people than you thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something we have to, as you said, we may have to go out and say, hey, listen, uh, we don't mind doing this because it's the right thing to do. But by the same token, you need to, you need to get on board with us mm -hmm. and help and pull your fair share. And I want to be clear, the people that we've housed have been from Salisbury. You know, we, we haven't been housing people from Princess Anne, it's just in terms of providing services. I just want to be clear about yep. that. And then there's figures that we have about um, it's about 30 the people. The oh, oh, sorry. homeless figure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that figure, I mean, that includes all of the lower shores. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So. Well, thank you very much. Yep, no, thank, thank, thank you work. for uh, thank you ever. letting me ramble. Thanks for yeah. stepping up. All right. Appreciate um, it. Cool. Oh, we didn't go over community centers. Did we need to go over community center operations? <laughs> Good. Do you guys want to go over community center operations? Quickly. Okay. Um, just uh, 
I think we budgeted a total of about thirty thousand uh, dollars for the two community centers. That covers electricity um, and uh, maintenance, repair, that sort of thing. That was quick. Mm -hmm. the, quick. Yeah, but now you have a question. Perfect. Um, Newton Street. Uh, timeline, I'm assuming. Yeah. Do you bring your mind? Did you get that on camera? No. Um, <laughs> so uh, we actually. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about that <laughs> um, in terms of the bids, or do you want me to take that on? Include that is performance, or <laughs> yeah. throwing pain. I, I attempted to assault the mail. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, we used our IDIQ, Big Nell Watkins Hosser um, architecture firm out of Baltimore. Um, did the designs? They came up with a seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar plan for renovating that. A uh, lar very large house, um, <laughs> which I think you could build a new house that size. For two or three, two or three, <laughs> two or three potentially, yes. So, um, so looking at looking at those um, figures, uh, uh, Amanda and her team have spent a lot of time winnowing that down to um, you know, closer to where we were originally targeting, like three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and so. Um, what it may mean is not doing certain pieces like the third floor right now, which are really tough to get to from an accessibility standpoint anyway. Um, but we're still looking at, um, so it's in procurement now. The construction of it is in procurement. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at, mm -hmm. oh, okay. yeah, the, yeah, the construction is with Michael. Oh, okay, um, cool. So that's just got to go out, uh, you know, so probably, 60 to 75 days from now at, at longest, because it's a 30 day open period, 30 day bid period, um, we'll be out for, um, uh, so probably early summer, um, we'll be awarded, uh, come through your, um, come through council early summer, and then um, construction done, we're looking into August. Um, so the, the goal is to, beginning of the school year, open. What it means is because we're not going to be open at the beginning of the summer, which we had never really targeted for, but um, you know there was some holding out hope. Um, what it means is that the summer lunch in the garden series will continue this year, but in the future they'd like to move it into the building and do you know kind of some stuff outside, some stuff inside, mm -hmm. connect to the garden, use the kitchen in the community center, and cook for the kids in the neighborhood. Good. And teach them how to cook. Okay. Good. Yeah, can I ask a question? Are these going to be the only two community centers in Townsville? Uh, as you probably recall, the uh, plan uh, adopted by the council is for three. Okay. Uh, the three neighborhoods that were identified in the strong SBY mm -hmm. neighborhoods plan um, were the three with the highest concentration of poverty, the highest concentration of juveniles, the least accessibility from a walking standpoint to um, any school uh, or other facility, other community facility. And it's the west side, it's um, the um, uh, Church Street neighborhood, and it's the Smith Street, Newton Street area. Cool. West side? Yeah, like, um, what, like the hill Delaware, Delaware Avenue. Yeah, yeah. California. Okay. Okay. Because when you said west side, yeah, you could describe West Side as the whole West Side. Yes, everything. yes. But most of that's not Salisbury. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I do know that. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, when you say the West Side, yeah. um, I just want to know, you know, exactly where it would possibly be. I know you don't know exactly where, yeah. but and, where and the possibility of it being. Right. And the the funding that went in the budget in 2017 that we're still using that money from. Was just for two, okay. um, so we'll you know, we'll need to have a conversation at some point about okay. money. If, yeah, when we're ready to pull off the okay. third, um, I think getting this open will help. Um, but it, you know, we've heard a lot about different options in, um, around there. Like um, you know, people talk about how walkable Pemberton Elementary is and things like that. But um, from you know. First, Second, Third Street, Delaware mm -hmm. Avenue. It's it's a hard walk to mm -hmm. for a kid for little kids. Okay. Cross have to cross parts to cross, to get up there. Yeah. So, like something inside of the the Parsons Fitzwater you know curve mm -hmm. is 
And that was the geography that was mapped out in the plan. I'm, 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 I'm trying to think myself, but I will, we'll talk about it. If, if anything comes to mind, because yeah. I think we actually may have some uh, in the one away conversation. Yeah, I was just there, talking with Debbie about that this morning. There, there may be some funding sources out there that we can tap into to make it happen sooner rather than later. Um, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, yeah. So one of the problems with that neighborhood specifically is uh, Finding a usable building that yeah. can be converted yeah. um, because the if you just look at that area, you have Sandy's shop, which of course is being occupied, mm -hmm. and then the the warehouse across the street, the GNI is using. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you go across the way, you know you're looking at the old uh, Greyhound bus station that I think you guys looked at one point and ruled out, um, mm -hmm. and uh, an old McDonald's. I mean that's that's about it. Um, so you're, you're fairly limited in terms of where on the other side we, we got lucky. And also, there aren't any large houses like, like in Newton or something. So what about areas. the old McDonald's? Is that? Uh, I mean, the that building itself is probably fine, but um, accessibility again. Yeah. yeah the street across the highway. Yeah. And well, either way they go, they're going to have to go across the highway. Well, if, well, but potentially. However, remember that the plan adopted had specific catchment areas that it was designed for the kids in those neighborhoods mm -hmm. that were where the, the highest concentration of kids living and not having access to a water pool school. Um, now that being said, um, uh, over there, the only the only thing about that McDonald's building is it is shown as gone in the other plan mm -hmm. that overlaps there. Okay. It, and both of them are adopted plans and they don't necessarily, they do talk to each other because that's not where it would show a community center being. But you could have a community center that was part of the new development. However, you're just talking about a lot of money. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly the But if there was anything existing, yeah. Yeah. So the problem is on the, on the hill, there's not, there's not a great building uh, that exists for that. So. Although, who, does GMI own that? Warehouse. Yeah, they do, yeah, and they yeah. use it, and yeah. they've refused. Yeah. They, they, they're not intent on selling it. Okay. You had enough of me? We had. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're making it no <laughs> Unless there was something that was in, you know, great condition. I was thinking about, for, we can talk about that. As you look at the camera. Why deck still looking right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so April, let's talk. Let's talk about it. Okay. If you got any thoughts on? We will talk. Okay. We'll talk. I don't want to hold this up. And Jack's not going to let me. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to scrap me. <laughs> I was reaching for my travel, but I only had to <laughs> I'm not going to use that. you be better. All right. Uh, Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. It's been Appreciate fun it. as always. Thank, Thank you, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Andy. All right. Where are we? I've lost my whole ticket to the Yeah. Now it is. Okay. We're back uh, with the final department of for today. <laughs> Um, and we'd like to welcome uh, Laura Sofer, Business Development. The floor is yours, my dear. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for your time, everyone. Uh, I'm sure you guys all have a copy of my budget. It's pretty straightforward. I'm here to answer any questions you have about our goals, priorities, essential items. Um, we kept pretty level funding this year, so the floor is yours if you have any questions for me. Would you like to hit the highlights? Um, highlights being, let's see, like I said, most of it was level. We had a few requests for increase in, increases in funding. Uh, Art Institute and Gallery saw a $1,000 increase. Um, yeah, I'm going through those. That was one of them. The SU Entrepreneurship Competition that we participate yeah. in annually. Annually, we funded um, that. The past three years, we've been utilizing a, I believe it's a HUD grant, and that will be completely utilized by this year. So going into next year, we're funding funding that at two thousand um, dollars. 
believe this may have been the only essential item that went through. I know funding went through at the mayor's level for uh, Lower Eastern Shore Heritage Council and the Chipman Center. What page is this? It's on page 15. Page 15 to 17. I believe so. I thought I saw it moved under me. Okay. Where did I see that? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't have any yeah. questions. <laughs> I don't have one. This one. Up. Congratulations, you're the only, the only one I have. <laughs> no, no, without maybe a question. Not. It might not have been under yeah. me. But I think Muir's got four or five. <laughs> <laughs> so we are we are putting into the budget the uh, revenues from the visitor center now, the so we won't have to be doing. No, uh, I think we can. We can't. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what they said. There's an issue with. What was the issue? We couldn't put it in the budget to automatically do it. We still have to come up with a transfer because it's a budget. We could you budget. Can you budget more money. We could budget more money for the appropriation based on. The, in, the anticipated revenue, so we're just knowing that we are anticipating um, more revenue than, than what we did in the past, mm -hmm. we can increase the appropriation for the uh, expenditure at the beginning right. of the year. So whatever we estimate that we're going to need to buy the amount over the course of the year, plus a little contingency, we should uh, appropriate that and then we're good and we won't have to come back. Is that the way we've done it? I've done budget ordinances whenever I have. Yeah, we haven't done that. So yet. we could we could increase that to an amount that's uh, more in keeping more with what we estimate it to be for the you don't year. Don't spend it unless you make it. But yeah. Yeah. The only problem with this year. The National Folk Fest is a National Folk Fest. Mm -hmm. Let's well, wait till next year. <laughs> <laughs> it might be easier to do. To no, it might be. Yeah, because that that will blow it out of the water. I would think. Well, no. we know what's going on this. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. What you? I'm thinking of fiscal year uh, 19 um, compared to where we are actuals for. 18. Yes, you know, we're in 18 right now where we think we're going to be projecting for 18 is where we could calibrate for 19. Um, but we're going to probably, it's we're probably going to exceed it. We could project high and fall short but then all we would have to do would be to put the whatever the sales were for those three that the following week we could do one mm -hmm. for just that amount right uh, no the sales just we'll just let them go into revenue and then if we have an appropriation at the beginning of the year that's going to hopefully get us to so the don't end put of the, year, the so put the good. average what you're saying is put the average in for the year. based on the current mm -hmm. rate and then we'll, okay. we can adjust that's fine that's the only way you can do it just knowing it's a placeholder that yeah, we don't right. want to spend money if we haven't made the money. Right. If, okay. If you're good with that, I, 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 I could have Laura, you could just email me tomorrow what yeah, you think it should be that. kicked up to, and I'll stick it in as a finance adjustment down at the bottom. Yeah, all we have to do is take care of the exception. Yeah. Yeah. We'll okay. we'll do and that then anything there. above and beyond would yeah. be we'll a still, budget still ordinance do, or do. an ordinance. Before we had said on anticipated <laughs> revenue could go on the consent agenda, somehow this got got it got off the consent Four agenda again. Don't go on the consent yeah. agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have to be read in full, and that's right. yeah. totally not okay. what the consent agenda is about. Okay. We've had this discussion. Yeah. I know, yeah. but but I, at one at one time he approved it. I must not have been there when he disapproved it. I wasn't it. there yeah. either. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're, it's, it's apparently it's been traveled. It's <laughs> came so. That's what. Keep moving. Yeah. Keep yeah. Moving. All right. <laughs> Oh, God. Any other questions, April? No. Laura, that's the shortest one we've ever had. <sighs> Thank you. Start for me. Well, Thank, you. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything that we missed? Uh, general questions. Now, according to the calendar. Is it the seventh? May 7th is the public hearing. Mm -hmm. And then we said we're going to meet on the 8th, correct? 
to make to the final adjustments. Mm -hmm. Is that what we said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Yes, okay. Sir. When are and you gonna? Then, what uh, in the morning on that? On eight thirty. At eight thirty. And honestly, that that meeting should not take more than an hour, I would think. <laughs> um, and then uh, the twenty second, we may not meet. And then uh, Tuesday the 29th is D-Day, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll be Jen, we'll be finished. Okay yes. Oh yeah. That way they all know when to be watching and listening. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, do you want a, a, a quick summary of what he sent us about the, uh, yes. the effects of the 4%? Let's, let's do that. They got back to us already with the 4%, which is good. And then Keith is going to send it out through Kim. Mm -hmm. She's got it, yeah. And then uh, we'll have it so okay. we can look at it I said that meeting. <laughs> so what you'll see is a slide like this, and you could try to compare it like that. I'm going to make it a little bit easier and just take one at a time, so I'm going to jump over here. <laughs> And you can see the operating reserve <coughs> uh, it, it, at 8%, it, the reserve was met at uh, the year, fiscal year 21. This would uh, push that uh, forward by two years, it would be 23. So that was its effect on the operating reserve. Looking at the next guy, you can see, uh, first of all, the rate differential uh, for the average quarterly bill. For uh, 19, it meant seven dollars and 92 cents savings, or 31 dollars and 68 cents. That's the differential um, for that first year. But you can look at the other data there. And then um, CIP funding, we had uh, uh, <coughs> uh, it's the same deal. The bottom is as it's currently uh, at eight percent. The top is at the reduction of 4%, and you can see uh, less funding is available to be done from cash right. in these years. You can see down here we're doing more from cash, so it's going to, this would result in more borrowing. Uh, so you can see here more clearly, this is the borrowing versus where we would have been here. I don't think it's a... For the, for the sake of, of controlling the increases, uh, the impact, why, and you know me, why I would like to get there quicker. I think we need to get there quicker in a sane manner. So just please send that to us and then we'll get a chance to look at it and then we'll discuss that on the 8th and we should be in good shape. Okay? Um, I want to thank uh, all the department heads and, uh, for coming and being prepared, and uh, Keith and the and you guys did a great job. Uh, we're almost there, but we've got a little bit a little bit to go. Uh, and Mir said it the other night, and I'll echo it that uh, it's getting easier every year uh, because of the presentation and uh, the setup. It's much, much cleaner. Um, next week, or or whenever you want to talk about it, uh, about health care um, changes potentially. Talk through that, um, and then we still need to come back to the 457 match conversation. Unless I missed that, um, I don't know if you want to do that now or next week. We'll do it on the eighth. We'll do. We've got three things on the eighth. We got the order and sort of finish okay. the match. In healthcare, okay, and and Mayor Day's uh, uh, Mayor Mayor Corp position, right? Yeah, okay. that's the return. Four. Yeah, I think that's the if I'm not mistaken, that's the only uh, stuff that we're stuff that's that on we put the, on the we, it's on this list. Uh, on list. We do have a, a donation uh, that has to has to come off, so it's an adjustment to uh, okay. fifty three thousand six hundred seven. And then we see what see where where we are. Good. Thank you, everybody. We're finished for today. Thank you.